Hi, welcome to Your Yoga Life with Vivian Wolf. I am Vivian Wolf, and this is Your Yoga Life. And today is day five of Align Your Values. We're going to dig into a paragraha, which is one of my very favorite yamas to practice and to align with. Um, I'm coming to you from my hotel room in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I am super excited to uh, be able to bring uh, this last yama to you in a place where a paragraha um, follows me constantly is always on my little on my shoulder whispering little nothings into my ear so really quickly I want to give you a little look of my view outside my hotel room so let me flip this around take a look at that gorgeous church and the water beyond it take a look at all of these beautiful historic buildings and all of the people who um, are just spending their day going to work or maybe they're hitting Starbucks at the library or something like that. It's a gorgeous place, I think. And so uh, let me settle this down, get it into a nice little spot, and we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit. So uh, a paragraha is uh, the, yogic, uh, the yogic term for non-wanting or non-hoarding. And so the Yoga Sutra is freedom from wanting unlocks the real purpose of existence. That's kind of a doozy. This is the first Yama that I practiced whenever I was going through my yoga training. And so I found it really, really enlightening whenever I started to kind of dig into where I was clenching and holding on to things or I was wanting desperately things that really didn't serve me, did not move me forward on my spiritual journey, did not better my life, but I wanted them for wanting sake. And so once I became aware of that sensation of that urge, I was able to quietly step away from it and live a life uh, of more joy because I didn't want things the same way that I did before. So we're going to talk about this. Um, so non-wanting, non-possessiveness, generosity, free. Uh, so when we start to talk about this, we talk about the physical part of it. I've got my little notes here and I'm, I'm going to borrow from them heavily today because uh, I don't have all my other resources that I usually have with me. So um, the physical side of a paragraha is... Um, Whenever you're not happy with yourself physically and you keep thinking of this future physical self that you're going to have, that's a violation of a paragraph. When, when I'm X amount of pounds, then I'll be happy. Or I can finally do yoga once I am flexible enough. That kind of uh, thinking is coming from a place of not having enough and wanting, to, uh, wanting in, a, in an unhealthy way. So uh, compare, comparing yourself with someone else wanting to be, wanting to look like or be like another person, um, trying to impress other people with your physicality as opposed to fully embodying your body and being as well and as healthy in your body as you can be, those are all, uh, those are also violations of a paragraha. So um, overeating or undereating, those are both also uh, signs of uh, an imbalance in your uh, par uh, paragraha. So there's this Asian concept and uh, the, the term, I, for some reason I didn't write it down and I usually have it right here with me, but it translates to eight parts full. Whenever you eat... Um, especially in American culture, there's this uh, kind of tendency to eat past the point of full. I don't know how many times I have said to myself, I have said out loud to the people I'm eating with, um, oh, I'm full, but I'm going to keep eating. That's uh, obviously a, a, a hoarding, a hoarding cessation, hoarding inside of your body. And we know it's not healthy, but we do it anyway. So whenever you start to practice a paragraha, you can start to recognize in that moment, I'm full. I'm going to stop eating now. And that's all it is really um, in, that kind of, in that kind of place. Um, for, in other ways that a paragraha shows up is whenever we 
are able to let go of what might happen in a moment and just focus on what is really happening. So this comes back to uh, yesterday when I was talking about the, the imaginary person who is at a party and it's a really fun party. Everyone's dancing and they're laughing and they're having a good time and conversations are, are, are lively and engaged. And there's that one girl who's sitting there crying because tomorrow everyone's going to be gone. And so uh, in this particular case, the idea of letting go of what might happen and actually fully being in the moment, that is practicing your Aparagraha. I hope that makes sense. Um, and for your soul, when you're connecting with people, enjoy that connection without worrying about whether or not this person is really true to you or whether or not they've got some hidden agenda. Um, being in the moment with either friends or family or spiritual leaders or uh, maybe your tribe or your clients or um, co-workers or employees um, being in the moment with them instead of thinking about where this conversation should go or can go or things like that that's getting into your paragraha being fully in the moment without wanting it to be something else um, feeling positive emotions without clinging to them. So uh, there's this uh, feeling sometimes that we don't want this to end. We never want this party to end. Again, the girl crying at the party. She never wants it. She doesn't want you to leave. She doesn't want you to end. She doesn't want this night to end ever. And so she's so tense and suffer. She's suffering because she's thinking about tomorrow when she should be enjoying the moment right now. So Enjoy the positive moments, the joyful moments in your life, but don't cling to them. Uh, allow them to come in and allow them to leave um, with gratitude because things can never stay the way that they are. The, oh no, it just lost connection, your video. Oh, but we're back. Okay. Sorry. The joys of being in a hotel room. Anyway, I'm almost done. I swear to God. Um, so. A paragraha in your life. Do you have clothes you don't wear in your closet taking up space? Uh -huh. I just took two bags yesterday to the Goodwill. Um, do you have books that you read that you know you're never going to read again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you own movies that you know you're never going to watch again? You might just start looking at the things that you hoard, that you hold in your house, that don't actually give you pleasure and don't serve you. They don't make you feel good. They don't give you joy, but you hold on to them for sentimental reasons or because you are holding on to the joy they once gave you, but no longer do. Those are things that you can start to weed out of your life to create room for new joyful things. So uh, another thing is buying just for status is uh, is uh, a symptom of comparisonitis. You want to look like the, trying to keep up with the Joneses, that kind of thing. Um, throwing away food is wasteful. We all tend to do it at least a little bit. I unfortunately couldn't finish my food last night, and so <laughs> I threw away a cookie. Anyone who knows me knows how crazy that is that I threw away a cookie. Um, but the, the final thing I just want to ask you before we get into the embodiment of this, of, this, uh, of this value of this yama is anytime that you confront yourself, uh, you find yourself confronted with a possible violation of a paragraha or non-hoarding, ask yourself, and this is a quote, will this thing bring me lasting happiness? Why do I want it? And then listen to your inner self without judgment for the answer. And you may find that, yes, this thing will give you lasting joy, that you want it for the right reasons, the reasons that make you feel good. And then you might also find that the reason why you want the thing is not so honorable to yourself, that, and that maybe you can put that thing down and walk away from it. Uh, it sounds really heavy and that's why we left it for last, but it is such a beautiful yama. One of the most beautiful things that I ever heard that when I was reading and studying this uh, back when I went through my teacher training was a paragraha is the unfurling of clenched fingers. 
And I really, I find that quote to be so beautiful and so moving. Where am I clenching? And where can I unfurl? Yeah? Okay, good. So let's, let's get it in our body. So today we're going to do noose pose, uh, and we're going to do it with some modifications here. And uh, noose pose with a uh, hand grip that is based on Ganesha. So we're going to bring our feet together, come into kind of a crouching position here. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. There we go. So you can see hopefully a little bit better. So we come into this little crouch position. Our knees are together. Our heels are high. This is the original pose. I am going to show it with modifications if you're a little unstable. And then we're going to come into a twist. So I'm going to twist so that I bring my right elbow to the outside of my left knee. And then we interlace, our, we interlock our fingers together, curling them together, clenching our fingers together, and pulling our elbows apart, coming into a little twist here. Right? So if you find yourself to be very unsteady here and you can't uh, get into this pose very well, you can take a blanket or a towel and put it underneath your heels so that you can send a little weight into the heels and you should feel a little bit more steady here. And if you need to put your elbow on top of your knee to come into this, that's a good start. And then you can work to the outside and then come into the twist here. And so I'm going to do this on both sides. So we take a couple of breaths. If you want to challenge yourself even further, you start to look over your left elbow, looking up and away. Good. And then you release that, come on down. And then for me, I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch my direction, but you can just go to the other side. So again, if you need to, you can use uh, a little prop to rest your ankles on, uh, rest your heels on here to get into this, come into a twist here, curl the fingers together and then gently pull them apart. Kind of like almost like monkeys in a barrel kind of thing here. And then again, if you want to challenge yourself a little further, you look over the right elbow and you're kind of pulling those elbows away from each other as you twist in the torso. So this is a really good, uh, full body pose here. So one more breath here. Good, and then we release that out. Well, I thank you all for watching this uh, video today. I thank you for going through the lessons to align your values this week. And I hope that you have a magical, wonderful, aligned weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. Namaste.